takes the power of sin and darkness Whose love is mighty and so much stronger The King of glory, the King above all kings Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder And leaves the breathless in awe and wonder The King of glory the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings the chaos back into order And makes the orphan a son and daughter The king of glory, the king above all kings this is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Good morning and welcome to worship here at Cottage Grove United Church of Christ. Where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are most welcome here. And we welcome you again into this virtual space and we are so glad that you are here. If this is your first time uh, with us or one of your first times with us, we are so glad and grateful that you have decided to worship in this community this morning. We hope that uh, uh, you will get a chance to take a, a further look at the Cottage Grove UCC Facebook page or our website, cgucc.org, as a place to connect, to find out more information. We would love to uh, talk with you. We would love to get to know you better. Uh, so please, uh, as you're comfortable, reach out in a way that is comfortable to you, and we would love to tell you more about Cottage Grove United Church of Christ. And this morning, uh, as we uh, pass our greetings to one another and pass the peace to one another, uh, we do so through our technology and through our Facebook Live uh, comment and chat section. If you would now just reach out uh, to one another with your greetings and with uh, your passing of the peace this morning, the peace of Christ 
be with you all. And now as we come together in worship, as we come before the living God, we do so uh, together, and would you join me in our opening prayer? Mighty God, creator of heaven and earth, we praise you with humble hearts in this sanctuary, our homes, and throughout this global virtual community. We thank you for giving us life, breath, and all things. We welcome your presence in our hearts and lives this day, awesome God, and pray that you will never be far from us. Give us the strength, hope, and patience to remember that your grace, mercy, and love are powerful enough to conquer all our fears, frustrations, and worries, especially in this time of pandemic. You are greater than we can ever imagine. You alone are worthy of all our worship and praise, and we offer it to you joyfully in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And in chapter 17, we find the Apostle Paul in one of his later missionary journeys as he has found his way to uh, Greece and especially to the city of Athens. And Paul's evangelical ministry was to share the good news of Christ and Christ's resurrection. Uh, and he took that commission that Christ gave to his disciples so seriously that, that he would take it to Jerusalem and to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And uh, Greece was uh, one of those places that was getting uh, towards the edge of the known world at that time. And so in Paul's missionary journeys, we, we find him in conversation with many different people. And t 
today we hear about one of those encounters that Paul has uh, possibly with uh, some of the, the Jewish leaders in Greece, uh, possibly with some of the philosophers in Greece, but also with some of the high court officials. And so here now, uh, the word and the good news that Paul proclaims in the book of Acts. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth. And he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this time, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the good news for today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, hello and good morning, everyone worshiping with us online here today. Uh, I'm normally is part of our tradition during the child's uh, children's time that we have all the children come forward. Um, and thankfully, we do have Kenneth here who's joining me here today. And uh, so that's really exciting. And I'm so excited that we have so many people I know from all over who are joining us online right now as well. And uh, if you would visualize with me, just imagine coming forward and uh, just imagine being in a circle with us here up on stage. Um, so to start things off, how many of you like fast food? I know I, know I do. <laughs> right? let's, think about, let's think about what your favorite fast food thing is. Maybe it's... Yes. We're going we're gonna to have this question be asked in the chat as well. Uh, for me, I, of course, think of, man, McDonald's French fries uh, are absolutely fantastic. Kenneth, what's something that you, you think of? Well, I really don't like McDonald's, so... It, it can be any fast food. Culver's. Culver's. See, that's a fantastic choice, too. Oh, the butter burgers. Oh, my goodness. I eat butter burgers. I love burger, butter burgers because I have outgrown the kids' meal. Yeah, the elusive kids meal starts to grow farther and farther in distance. That free Scoopy token really, even as an adult, that feels good to get that. But uh, perfect. Oh, DQ. What an excellent. It's not fast food, it's fan food. That's, uh, I'm not paid to say that. Cheeseburger. cheeseburger doesn't matter where get that get that man a cheeseburger any place basically DQ Culver's 
Oh, Raisin Cane's. Oh, the chicken fingers. Oh, the Texas toast and the sacred special sauce. <laughs> that is some good stuff. Oh. Well, yes, a few days ago, the lot, there was at least 20 to 15 cars just parked in line. Wow. Yeah. Well, man, I mean, already, just as we've been thinking about some of our favorite fast food options and some of our favorite fast food things, we start realizing that, holy cow, there's a lot of places that you can get some some fast food from. There's a lot of places that you can get fast food from. And uh, one of the interesting things is that, you know, we drive by, we're, you know, we're in the car, we're maybe riding our bike or something like that, you know, we'll maybe pass a McDonald's, a Culver's, a Dairy Queen, Raising Cane's. We may pass all kinds of different places and we, and we look at them and we're like, oh my gosh, yeah, it's right there. Oh, another one. Oh, yeah. The or it's like an orange Julius almost, but yeah. Oh man, Arby's, yeah. Right, we... Dunkin' Donuts, how could we forget? Krispy Kreme. Uh, unfortunately, that location closed here in Minnesota, but it forever lives in my heart. Um, I, I uh, you know, so as we think, right, there's a lot of different places, right? And we look at them, and of course we see them, and we're like, oh yeah, McDonald's, Burger King, you know, there's all kinds of different places. You used to go right in them, but then you see this whole drive through packed in. And it's like, why isn't anybody inside? Right. Well, unfortunately, it's because of COVID-19 right now. But White Castle. Oh, my gosh. It's been some time since I have thought about White Castle. I used to live by one. That's, that's uh, man, those sliders. Man, you can pound those down very easily. Well, one of the things that's interesting is that, uh, you know, Brian just shared with us about the Apostle Paul. And while he was in Greece, while he was in Athens, and as he was looking around, similar to how, you know, we may be driving around and we see all kinds of different fast food restaurants, Paul was noticing that there are all kinds of different shrines and temples and monuments to all these different gods that the people in Athens the people in Greece believed in and were patrons of, right? So they would, you know, instead of us going to McDonald's to get a Big Mac, maybe someone in Athens would go to the shrine of Zeus and, you know, would ask Zeus for something, right? And to the Athenians, there were so many different gods and there were so many, you know, versions of different gods, right? And Paul was very troubled by this. And so, uh, you know, when he starts off in his speech, he starts saying, you know, I can, tell, I can tell how religious you are. Or if you think of it in terms of fast food, I can tell that you people really love fast food. Right? It's kind of a little bit of a connection, a little bit of a drawing. Um, and as Paul is explaining these things, he, he makes mention that there's, you know, this shrine, this, this altar to the unknown God. And he takes that opportunity to be able to then talk about the God above all other gods. The God that is so far beyond any of the other gods that they are just nothing in comparison. Can you imagine, could you imagine all of a sudden realizing that there's a fast food restaurant that's actually not even a restaurant. It's bigger than a restaurant. And it has the most perfect form of every food. Speechless. I agree. It's, I mean, it would be... This is exaggerating. Nothing's bigger than a fast food restaurant. Oh, there's things bigger than a fast food restaurant. But, but uh, it's... Uh, so as, and so Paul says, this, this shrine to the unknown God, this is, this is the thing you're missing. What you don't realize and what you don't understand is that all of these other places, all these other places are, are nowhere near as good as, as the, the God or the fast food restaurant that I'm talking about. And as he is talking with them, 
as he is sharing with them, he shares things like, tells them that God is the creator of all things. That you could think of it like that, yeah. Absolutely. The most perfect version of a butter burger, right? And um, as, uh, you know, it can, and they, as, uh, as they talked together, as they, as Paul was talking, um, he said, God, the God that I'm telling you about is the God who created the whole entire universe. The God that I'm telling you about is the one in which that we, that through him we live and move and we find, we find our, our, our very being within, within God. And man, as Paul's saying that, it just makes you feel like, man, God is so big, right? If God created the entire universe, I mean, there's galaxies that are hundreds of thousands of light years away. That even if you're traveling at the speed of light, it would take you sometimes millions of years to get to a galaxy. And it can make you feel kind of small. It can make you feel like, like you're maybe not even that significant. Or that the universe is so big that there's just too many questions, there's too many things that you just don't really understand, you don't really know. But Paul says something else too. You may remember Paul also was saying that God is within us as well. That God is surrounding us. That God's presence is as near to us as our own breath. It's a term, that's a phrase that I really like, right? Maybe we can all just take a moment, just take a deep breath in. And out. It's amazing that the God of the universe, the God that created everything, not just that created everything, but calls it good, is as big and more expansive than the universe itself, and yet also as near and as close in our own hearts, that we can't even move or live or have our being without him, without God being within us. And sometimes we can feel confused, just like the, just like the people in Athens, just like the people in Greece, right? We can be kind of confused. We can maybe scoff at that idea or we can not believe it's true. We can think that uh, things are a lot smaller than they really are or things aren't as significant as they really are. But one of the things I hope that we can think about all together and that I especially want all of us, uh, all the children and everyone to know is that God is with you. Even in these times where things feel scary, even during times when things feel confusing and difficult, that God is so big, but also so close. And uh, so what do you think about that, Kenneth? I kind of put you on the spot. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um, We'll just close this, uh, this time out just with a little bit of prayer together. Lord God, we thank you that, that you are so incredibly expansive and large, that you created the beauty that we see all around us. As the hymn that we sang just before uh, says, there, there's nothing that we can see that doesn't just proclaim your glory. As we look at the flowers, the trees, the universe, the stars, our friends, our family, there's beauty all over the world that has your fingerprint all over it. We have your fingerprint all over us. God, we thank you for that. We thank you that we have the capacity to love and have compassion and care for one another because you showed what love looks like to us. So God, we just thank you for all these things and and we pray that as we think about this big universe together that we can always remember that you are so near to us and that no matter what it is that we're facing that you are with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and uh, uh, let's have an awesome rest of the service here together. Now I really want chicken canes. That's on my mind, too. <laughs>
Thank you, Austin, and I uh, have a feeling now that uh, uh, Grubhub and DoorDash and some others are going to get a lot of business from us today as we're all ordering our favorite fast food takeout. So uh, it's, uh, it's good to be reminded of all those uh, lessons this morning, so thank you. And most of you know that um, today on the third Sunday in May here at Cottage Grove United Church of Christ is traditionally what we call Award Sunday. And it is a time when our kids' ministry students uh, lead us in worship. And they uh, uh, sing and they offer uh, some lessons from things that they've learned throughout the kids' ministry year. Uh, it's a, a real joyous day. And unfortunately, we can't do it the same way as we uh, traditionally do. But we didn't want the opportunity to go by without recognizing our wonderful kids ministry students and all the amazing things that they do and all the fun times that they have uh, throughout this year. And so our teachers and our Sunday school, our kids ministry superintendent, Chrissy Jacobs, have put together a, a fantastic video uh, to remind us uh, and to recognize uh, our wonderful kids ministry students. And so uh, we hope you enjoy uh, looking back on this year as we do. ministry. Normally on this Sunday in May, we would be celebrating together our year that we've had in kids ministry. You'd be sharing your learning with the congregation, and I would be giving you participation pins and thanking your teachers for all their hard work. During this stay at home time, since we cannot be together, we will have to do our celebrating later, and we will. Right now, I have some messages for you some, from some very special people. Enjoy. Hi, Kids Ministry Preschoolers. It's Miss Tally. Just wanted to send you a note saying thank you for letting me be your teacher this year, and I hope, really hope that I get to see you soon. I hope you like this filter. It's me sending some love to you. Hi, kiddos. It's Miss Jen. I just wanted to say hi and say I miss you. I hope you're all doing great. I hope to see you soon. Bye, guys. Hi, Kids Ministry Kids. It's Bobby Joe. I just wanted to reach out to you tonight to say hello, um, to uh, tell you how much that I'm missing seeing you guys in Sunday school. Um, that we can't be together. Um, and I know that it's kind of a scary time for you guys. Um, we're not going to school and you can't see your friends and... Uh, it's just kind of one of these weird times that we're trying to get used to here. So, um, until we see each other again, I want to challenge you guys to do something, maybe with your parents or something that makes you happy. Uh, go outside, see nature, um, see everything that uh, God has put on this earth for us to um, witness, all the animals and plants. I know that brings me a lot of joy. So until we see each other again, have a great summer. Hopefully we'll see you in the fall. Um, until then, we'll see you later. Bye. Thanks, Kids Ministry, for a great year. I enjoyed being creative with you every Sunday. The team and I want to give a big shout out to the second grade Kids Ministry class. Kaden, Lucas, Eli, Noah, Josie, Hudson, and Hadley. They all worked hard this year and even at home these last couple of months. This year we focused on learning about the Bible. We learned how to find the book, chapter, and verse. We learned the difference between the Old and the New Testaments. We also read about Noah and the flood, Moses and the Ten Commandments, Jesus being baptized, washing his disciples' feet, and later breaking bread with his disciples. The second these kids came into the classroom, even before doing their stickers for attendance, they were opening their books and finding different things. In addition, they were always helping each other. Thank you, second graders. Christina and I had fun and enjoyed every minute with you. Have a great summer, and we'll see you soon. Hey, kids, ministry kids. This is Emily, your 
music leader, and I just want to say thank you for a great kids ministry year. I know we didn't get to spend as much time together as we really wanted to this year, but I wanted to share how much it means that you come and that you sing and that you raise your voices each and every Sunday during our time together. Thank you for sharing those voices, not just with each other and with your teachers, but with our congregation. And I just pray that you continue to be the light of Jesus this summer as you play, as you make new friends, and as we look forward to seeing you again very soon. So please remember, do be that light in the world, and remember to just let it shine. Turn into wine 
Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you Not like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise With no one like you Not like you I got a greater, I got a stronger God, you are higher than any other I got a healer, awesome in power Our God, our God Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, I got a healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if I got us for us, then who can ever stop us, and if I got us with us, then what could stand against if my God is for us? Then who could ever stop us? If my God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? I got a greater, I got a stronger. God, you are higher than any other. I got a healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if I got us for us, then who could ever stop us? If I got us with us, then what could stand against? If I got us for us, then who could ever stop us? If I got us with us, then what could stand against? Then what to stand again? Friends, if I were to put you on the spot right now and ask you to describe your image of God, what would you say? What words would you use? Now, if you feel comfortable and want to share some of those on Facebook Live this morning, please do so. I'm wondering what attributes of God you would raise up. Maybe all-powerful, all-knowing, merciful, mighty, just, gracious, compassionate, righteous, forgiving, redeemer, sustainer, creator of all, Lord of all, life-giving, savior. The list is seemingly endless. The truth is that no amount of human words will ever be fully able to describe God. For God is indescribable. But the words we do use are important because they form our vision and image of God. And those words influence what we believe about God and what God can do in our life and in the world. After his life-altering experience with the risen Christ on the road to Damascus, the Apostle Paul set out on a mission to tell everyone he met about the good news of Jesus' resurrection and the awesome God that made that impossible act possible. 
Paul's travels took him throughout the known world at the time, from Israel to Syria to what is modern-day Turkey to Greece and eventually to Italy, ending in Rome. And one of Paul's later missionary journeys took him to the city of Athens in Greece. The Greeks in the first century were polytheistic, meaning they believed in a myriad of gods and goddesses that each had the power to control or influence some aspect of human life. Some gods and goddesses like Zeus and Ares, Hades, Hera, and Aphrodite were believed to be more powerful than others and thus more worthy of honor, worship, and appeasement. And as in most places where Paul began preaching and teaching about Jesus uninvited, he drew a lot of negative attention to himself. And in Athens, he began arguing with some of the Jews in the synagogue and with some of the philosophers in the public square. He was eventually picked up by the local authorities and taken to the Oropagus, which is a high rocky hill overlooking the city that also served as a holy place, cultural center, and courtroom for the Athenians. Paul, being a shrewd observer of people and context, understood that most Athenians were polytheistic in their religious beliefs, but that they were also open-minded to hearing about other gods and goddesses. Paul had noticed earlier in his trip that one of the objects of their worship that they had erected in the city was a statue to an unknown god. And when asked by the Athenian court officials to explain what he was doing in their city and why, Paul wisely used this unknown god as an opening to tell people about the one god that he believed in. Paul told the Athenians that the God they worshipped as unknown was actually the only God, the creator of the world and everything in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, the one who gives life and breath to all things, and in whom we live and move and have our being. This God, Paul says, is our divine parent to whom we are all children. This God also has the power to be transcendent and eminent at the same time, to be as far as the most distant star and near and as close to us as our last breath. The God Paul describes to the Athenians is all-powerful, all-knowing, righteous, just, forgiving, and more. Even Paul runs out of words for God, but the words he does use leave the Athenians and us feeling that God can do anything, that nothing is impossible for God. Not even bringing life out of death, joy out of sorrow, and hope out of despair. Now, there is a big difference between knowing and believing, How We can know something is true, but unless we believe it, our actions will often not match our words. The modern mystic A.W. Tozer believed that a low view of God is the cause of a hundred lesser evils. But a high view of God is the solution to 10,000 temporal problems. What Tozer is suggesting is that when we minimize God to an image or vision we can fully understand, our minds place limits and restrictions on God's power. This, of course, does not actually limit God's power at all. The only thing it does is limit our faith and expectation in what God can do and will do in our lives and in the world. A low view of God makes us believe that there are problems that God cannot solve. 
challenges that God cannot overcome, and evils that God cannot defeat. This low view of God is a big problem because it robs us of experiencing the awesomeness of God and God's power. In his book, The Circle Maker, Reverend Mark Batterson says that while God's power is technically measureless, the prophet Isaiah gives us a glimpse of God's omnipotence and omniscience by comparing them to the size of the universe. The distance between God's wisdom and our wisdom, God's power and our power, is likened to the distance from one side of the universe to the other. As the heavens are higher than the earth, says Isaiah, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Batterson goes on to say that the universe is so large that it requires an awfully large tape. The basic unit of measurement is a light year. And light travels at 186,000 miles per second, which is so fast that in the time it takes to snap your fingers, light circumnavigates the globe half a dozen times. In one minute, light travels 11 million miles. In one day, light travels 160 billion miles. And in one year, light travels an unfathomable 5 trillion, 865 billion, 696 miles. But that's just one light year. The outer edge of the universe, according to astrophysicists, is 15.5 billion light years away. And if that seems incomprehensible, it's because it's virtually unimaginable. Yet God says that this is the distance between his thoughts and our thoughts, his power and our power. So here's my thought, says Batterson. Our best thought on our best day falls 15.5 billion light years short of how great and good God really is. I want to say that again. Our best thought on our best day falls 15.5 billion light years short of how great and how good God really is. Even the most brilliant among us underestimate God by 15.5 billion light years. And God is able to do 15.5 billion light years beyond what we can ask or imagine. Can you imagine? I know that right now many of us are dealing with some big problems caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This global crisis has left billions of people grieving the loss of loved ones, health, homes, jobs, livelihoods, and freedoms. The tragic effects of this pandemic go even deeper, however. Mental health counselors and suicide prevention hotlines are being overwhelmed with calls for help. Incidents of domestic violence and abuse have increased dramatically during this time of quarantine and shelter in place. And people recovering from addictions are relapsing at an alarming rate. Some days it feels like the world is on the verge of collapse and we are powerless to do anything about it. But that's when we need to ask ourselves one very important question. Are our problems greater than God or is God greater than our problems? 
times. Because of Jesus Christ and his life, death, and resurrection, I have come to believe that there is no earthly power or problem that is greater than God. God is greater than our biggest fears. God is greater than any disease, virus, pain, or illness. God is greater than any addiction. God is greater than any injustice. God is greater than our greatest mistakes and sins. And God is greater than death. For the worst thing is never the last thing. Sometimes in my humanness, I forget that God is greater than all these things. And it's prayer that helps remind me and reassure me of God's awesome and limitless power. A year ago, this weekend, actually, I started my first ever sabbatical. And I also started to do something that I had never really done before in my life. I started to pray big, bold prayers to God. And I felt awkward and clumsy at first, asking God to do something that I thought was impossible. But as I named the great attributes of God in my prayers, as I came before the one who was all-powerful, all-knowing, redeemer, savior, creator of the universe, I was reminded once again that nothing is impossible for God. God can do anything. But I have come to understand and accept that God will not do everything. At least not in the ways I think I want or expect. But believing God can do anything gives me great confidence to keep praying those big, bold prayers because today might just be the day that God makes the impossible possible once again. That is why every day at 9.30 a.m., I pray for a cure to be found for the COVID-19 virus and for an end to these days of pandemic. Some days it feels like this is never going to happen, but then I remember that the author of creation is on the job, that the Lord of heaven and earth has taken up the case. And that the God of resurrection power is working for our good, even now in these uncertain times. And it brings me great hope. Praying also reminds me that I am not powerless. God has blessed me and all of us with gifts from the Holy Spirit to combat the powers of death and sin and evil those gifts become even more powerful when we use them in unity with one another. And with God's help, we can get through these difficult days of pandemic together and come through it stronger and more resilient. Let us never forget that God is greater and we are stronger than COVID-19 and any problem we may face in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Thanks be to God for that blessed assurance. Amen.
great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Age to age stands. Time is in His hand. Beginning and the end. Beginning and the end. The God in Father, Spirit, Son, Lion and the Lamb, Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. How great day and above all our day. is our God, and we give great thanks for our God today who uh, blesses us with all that we have and all that we give to others. And uh, in just a few minutes, we are going to be coming together in a, a time of prayer, and as we prepare for that time, if you have a, a prayer that you would like to share with uh, the community of faith this morning, uh, on Facebook, on the chat and comment section, if you would begin to start uh, offering your prayers there, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. But right now, we come to a time of giving, a, a time of offering the, the best of ourselves, our first fruits, back to God for uh, the mission and ministry that Christ is continuing to do in our world uh, through God's people, God's children. And here at Cottage Grove United Church of Christ, uh, we uh, are continuing to do very important ministry in this time to uh, connect people, to feed people both us physically and spiritually, to be able to uh, connect people socially and spiritually as well in this time, as, to well, as well as to connect people to God, most importantly. And so... This morning we ask, as you are able to give, that you would give in the way that is most comfortable for you. And there are multiple ways to do that in this time when we uh, cannot receive a physical offering here in worship. And one of those ways uh, is a, uh, uh, via electronic giving, and there is a safe and secure online giving option that we have uh, where you can either use the QR code and scan that, which is on the screen right now, or you can go to our website, uh, cgucc.org, and there is right on the homepage a button that says Give Now, and you click on that button and it will take you directly to that secure link. 
You can also uh, continue to give uh, by mail. Uh, cash or check can be sent to the church at Cottage Grove United Church of Christ, 7008 Lamar Avenue South, Cottage Grove, Minnesota, 55016. And the third way is to uh, give by a, an automatic withdrawal, and we can help you set that up whether you want to do that ongoing or make that a, a one-time contribution. We would be happy to help you to do that. All gifts, no matter the amount, are going to do amazing ministry in this time. And so we ask that you would give as you are able with joyful and generous hearts. And now we come to our time of prayer together. And we want to pause uh, to lift up any of the prayers that have been uh, offered on Facebook this morning. And so I would ask Emily, are there prayers uh, this morning that we can lift up into our community? And we do have uh, some other prayer requests that have come in this week. So as we're waiting for others to maybe share this morning, uh, we also want to uh, lift up a good friend uh, of our congregation, Midge, her mother. Uh, Marilyn had to have emergency surgery yesterday to remove a blood clot and a second surgery late last night. And so we'd ask that you would uh, give uh, all your prayers uh, to Marilyn uh, as she goes through this very difficult time, and to Midge and their family, as unfortunately during this pandemic they cannot be with her in the hospital. And so prayers for uh, protection and healing for Marilyn and prayers of comfort uh, and peace for Midge and her family. And we also want to lift up all of the, the residents and staff at Norris Square Senior Living here in Cottage Grove, as uh, unfortunately over the past week to 10 days, uh, they have had uh, multiple confirmed cases of COVID-19 at Norris Square. And so we think of, of those uh, folks who are ill and are praying for their recovery, but we also pray that uh, that virus not continue to spread uh, in and at Norris Square. Are there any other prayers that have come in yet this morning, Emily? Well, let us uh, re remember that we can continue to uh, pray, continue to offer those prayers at any time, and those can be sent here to the church uh, via email, or you could share those uh, continuously on Facebook and in our private uh, Cottage Grove UCC members and friends group as well if that's where you are most comfortable sharing. Let us take now time to pause and to breathe in that spirit of God that as we remember how close God is to us, close as our last breath, let us take a moment to remember that God is with us as we come before God in prayer. Gracious and loving creator, sometimes the words just are not there. God, you are so amazing that our words and thoughts of how best to praise you pale in comparison to the splendors of your name. You are the almighty, you are the redeemer, you are grace never ending, and the embodiment of love itself. And when we come to you in prayer, sometimes words fail us in what to say. 
Remind us each day, awesome God, that there is no prayer or problem too large or too small for you. Help us remember that you are bigger than our biggest problems and that your grace is greater than our greatest mistakes. Merciful God, in this unprecedented and uncertain time, We lift up those in need of your powerful presence. Prayers of peace for those whose anxieties, fears, and worries threaten to overwhelm them. Prayers of strength for those for whom each new day is a battle, especially those dealing with addictions, homelessness, hunger, mental health issues, stress. Prayers of protection and healing for those infected with the COVID-19 virus and those caring for them, as well as for all people who are sick and injured. We especially pray today for Midge's mother, Marilyn, who underwent emergency surgery yesterday. For all the staff and residents at Norris Square Senior Living in Cottage Grove. And for all those who are dealing with injury, illness, and pain. We would ask that you would shine your love and your light upon them this day, dear God. Surround them and let them know that you are near. And give them hope. We offer prayers of faith for those who are struggling with doubt in this time, gracious God. We ask for prayers of wisdom for those who are making some difficult and important decisions, especially for Governor Walls, our state, local, and national health officials and lawmakers, and President Trump and his administration. We offer prayers of love for those feeling isolated, alone, afraid, and rejected. We ask for prayers of comfort for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, health, homes, jobs, security, and freedom. We offer prayers of blessing and thanksgiving for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren We ask for blessings that their days and lives be filled with happiness and health and hope. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for the things that we sometimes overlook, like the rains that fall today that will lead to growth and new life in the days ahead. Amazing God, your love and mercy, forgiveness and peace, comfort and protection are not withheld from us, but are poured out in abundance. For this we thank you. We thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. And renew us and heal us by that love that we might live as your children always. And might the light of your love so shine in our own lives that the dark times and places in the lives of others might be illuminated. And may this brilliance be a beacon of hope as evidenced by the life of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now let us go knowing that our great God is with us. That our great God is working for our good in the world and that our great God is working within us to make our world better. Let us go in the grace and peace of Christ, knowing that we can walk this path together, knowing that God is with us. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Forever